There you go. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Viral Cash Flow Podcast. We are your guide to the coding viral trends and transforming online buzz into cash flow. I'm your host, Jenny Marie. I'm online uh, on Facebook as the Nostalgic Virgo. I'm joined this afternoon with my co-host, Lorraine Kamisha and Jessica Joss Speaks Digital. Uh, we are uh, teachers. We teach entrepreneurs how to go viral, profit on social media. In this 30-minute episode, we're going to explore the latest viral topics. And we're super excited because we have a special guest today by the name of Dara B. Welcome, Dara. Hey. Um, so Dara's going to be weighing in. Dara has gone um, viral. <laughs> Her groups mm -hmm. have gone viral. I'll say that on Facebook. And she's found a way to monetize um, through affiliate links. So we'll talk more about that topic later on. But before we do, this is, I think, our favorite part of the show. Um, we love to do our trending topics roundup, and we'll keep it light today, ladies. So um, who's going to kick us off? What are we talking about this afternoon? Um, one of the things that uh, was brought to light here, and I'm just kind of going through uh, Google Trends, because we had a couple of topics, but I'm going through um, Google Trends to kind of see what's happening. There, is, You know what I would find interesting about Google Trends is that the majority of the time, it does not relate to minorities. Because <laughs> a lot of the topics that we talked about beforehand, before we started recording, are not on this Google tree. <laughs> uh, Keanu Reeves uh, is like on the Google trends, right? It's it's crazy. So um, Howie Mandel. Yeah. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get into some Google shops and what we think are trending topics. Um, I know that, um, is it Daria? How do I say your name? I, wanna, I don't want to butcher it. Uh, Dira. Dira. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dira. You brought up a couple of trending topics for us. So go ahead and throw us one so we can pull it up. Um, the whole JT and Nikki's tour right now. Okay. As far as with that. Um, and then we did speak about the digital era with the girls right now. It seemed like the girls in their 20s are becoming millionaires off of their digital products. And then we also did talk about the MRR courses and how they suck. <laughs> yeah, it is um it's giving pyramid scheme, it's giving scam, it's giving <laughs> it's so Dara, you gotta tell you gotta tell you know what that is. Okay, that's what it is. Okay. Uh, what the abbreviation is for Dara, because we've got some novices and some beginners in our audience. Uh, my name, my abbreviation of my uh, for name? MRR. Oh, MRR, Master Reseller Rights. Master yeah. Resell Rights. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, so MRRs. So let's go around. Let's do it like a round robin. Lorraine, what are your thoughts on MRRs? It's not for me. Um, and and because I mean, Dara said it earlier, like they're all promoting in the same way. And for me, I guess you know everybody knows I'm neurodivergent or whatever. So it, when stuff is like in such a just, it throws up red flags for me, and and it just. Yeah, I, I never could get into it. Now, I'm not going to say I haven't done any type of thing with like, um, what do they call PLR yeah. and stuff like that. That that mm -hmm. I feel like that's a whole nother separate thing. I feel yeah. like, you know, calendars and things like that. OK, that's one thing. But I mean, when you're talking about selling a whole program for thousands of dollars that are just like cookie cutter, just reselling, reselling, reselling mm -hmm. and you're not adding anything to it. You I think you start running into the situation where like. A lot of people are teaching things that they've never done actually before ever. Like you have not, you haven't made ten thousand dollars a week. Why are you teach trying to teach people how to make ten thousand dollars a week? That that doesn't make any sense. Um, with my coaching clients, it's one of the things that I talk to them or try to caution them about is when they feel like they're stuck in in a rut. Like, oh, I haven't gotten many, many sales, or you know, my income. I need to increase my income. Okay, well now it's time to balance teaching and actually doing sometimes you fall into uh, this trap of well i gotta teach everything and you haven't done it yet just like do it and then come back and teach it so that's how i feel on that note it's, it's like a big i don't know <laughs> it's a big mess of a lot of issues for me right right jenny um so i'll piggyback off of lorraine so i'm a trainer you know i, I train right i do corporate training I, right now i'm aligned to university um, so yes, is there a way to, <laughs> I'm all about, um, helping people close the gap, right? Do less work on the front end. However, you also need to be versed in whatever it is that you're teaching. 
Um, and I think there's a way that you can go back and add your own um, kind of flavor to things, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I'm all about, you know, kind of agility, helping people close gaps on things. I'm somebody that will help folks do the work on the front end so that they can rock it ahead. Um, so, and I think it's okay, but it's got to be used in the right way. Yeah. Dyra, Dyra. Dara B. <laughs> um, so my take on it is uh, we have a lot of people that really don't even do what they're what they're advertising. Right. Um, they're not even, you know, they just hopped on the train, right? Um, called it digital wealth, and they took that and ran with it. So I don't think it's something that will last long. I don't think it's going to bring longevity. Um, it's quick money, but it's also not. Uh, giving you a chance to build a community that is going to keep you around for quite some time. You know, we see people like Jackie Ina. She has her whole brand. She has her whole audience. She's never going anywhere. She's staying around because uh, she has created that community that it relies on her uh, for that information. And these MRR courses is just people just jumping into it and they're literally just... Um, they're literally just trying to make some quick cash. I, it's not for me. I don't do it. I don't like it. Um, I wouldn't recommend it to anybody at all. Yeah, you know what? I ain't gonna lie. I was like for it for a minute because I was like, oh, I could just write real quick, <laughs> right? Um, I, think, I think I do that a lot though. Or, or I used to anyway. Um, I'm like, oh, what's over here? Oh, look at this. Oh, now they're doing that. Oh, yeah, let's do that too. You know, um, and adding on the let's do that too, right? I was like, oh, I can, oh, you know how many courses I can MRR real quick? <laughs> let's rack it up, right? Um, but then to your point, right, you look at how you have to promote that and the ways that these women are, oh, not these women, oh, men do it too, but the way the folks are promoting this and you're like, oh, I don't know if that feel right within my soul. You know, I don't know if that, that feels right. Um, MRR is, so the, the big thing of it is that you're taking this course about what you're talking about and then you're selling it, <laughs> reselling it to people that are buying it from you, but then they're turning you into, it really is giving pyramid scheme. It really gives that whole you buy it, then I get you to buy in, and then you get your cousin to buy in, and then we go on just, you know, top, 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 top. And I was just like, uh, yeah, nah. So, you know, I think I raise an eyebrow, or I, I at least give a little peek to anything that I can make a quick $5,000, you know, $2,000 at. But at the same token, I'm always coming back to my base and, and who I am as an individual and as a as a brand of, you know, building up this whole Joss Speaks digital thing. Like, do I want to be connected? Probably not. You know, um, and like you said, Jackie Anna is one of them. I'm trying to think of uh, someone else that has a really good connection to their base. Um, Kev on stage is someone that comes to mind. Um, also, um, Homeboy that has his skits. What's his name? Um, Country Wayne. Country Wayne. Right. <laughs> These are all folks that are creating content and then selling something on the back end, but building an audience of people that continuously come to them over and over and over again. So I, I'm hearing a reoccurring theme from all of the ladies up here is I like building that brand and building that community and having that connection is important. But let's not also forget that large companies have been doing this for years. They call it white labeling. <laughs> OK, so let's be for real. You know, they take a product, they manufacture it. One company does and then they sell it to other companies who put their brand name on it. So um, I think there's some things to be learned there. I'll, I'll leave Very that. true. Very true. Nothing new under the sun, as no. they say. Um, so the J whole JT and uh, Nicki Minaj thing, I am not finding anything on this. Y'all got to give me some insight. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's happening. Seriously? <laughs> you want insight from me? Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I was oh, about to say. I'm like, sorry. I, <laughs> um, I think the lesson that JT, and I'm, I'm very, like, I've looked more so into the marketing side of things. Um, I'm very, I'm very uh, thoughtful when it comes to the marketing side of things. So I see what JT is trying to do. I see that she's trying to build her uh, organic fan base. Once again, we touch on that community to stick around that longevity. And although people don't like Nikki, they don't like her attitude. 
she has that community that is going to keep her a millionaire. And it's just kind of a lesson to me as um, I'm 25. You know, it's a lesson to me as someone that is young and that is really trying to take a rich off of content to something that I want to be a multi-million dollar brand. I want I want my name to ring bells when I walk into rooms. Right. So me seeing uh, JT out here grinding, you know, Glorilla called her uh, called her her tour of uh, backyard picnics, right? Backyard barbecue picnics. Go ahead, baby. Called her a backyard uh, picnic, backyard barbecue. And to me, it was like, Glorilla, you don't even you don't even have that community yet while JT is leveraging and building hers. She's making the right connections in order to build that community. And the lesson to me is someone that is young, someone that's an entrepreneur, um, someone that has touched $50,000 already on my own from my community. It gives me that lesson that we need to keep grinding. We need to go out there. We need to build our communities. We need to um, make our voices heard. That's what I'm. That's what I'm getting from all of that. Yes, the beef is nice. the 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 shave room, being on the shave room, is nice. But it's all a marketing tactic when it comes to making money and staying in the limelight, so that you can have longevity in this in this uh in this business. Honestly. Uh, Jenny, do you know much about the context of what the beef is? Um, I don't know what the context is. I will say that you, you, there, there are two sides, right? You love JT or you you love, you know, Glorilla or whoever's on the other side. Um, I will say the other thing I've seen, because I'm staying, I stay in the blog comments, is a lot of folks talk about JT's attitude. Um, and so I think, again, does she say and do things that people kind of side eye? Yes. But to Dara's point, her audience is her audience, and they're going to ride for her regardless. Mm. It also puts me in the mind of who is our friend who does the makeup that's always in the news with her relationships out of Louisiana. Mm, girl. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, she, the, oh, goodness gracious. What's her Big name? makeup influencer. She was a huge influencer, and her brand took off. And then she would stay in the blogs about, you know, Lewis was her ex, her baby daddy. Oh, super. Oh, super, 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 super right? Yeah, I already oh, see. Oh, I she know, I already know what's crayon. Going on. I would have been crayon. like, oh, <laughs> yes, the crayon case. I see people saying, oh, it's tarnishing her brand. But guess what? Her brand, like her followers are her followers. They, they are loyal to her because, to Dara's point again, she is who she is. And she sold her personality as her social media presence. And people are just going to, they're going to ride for her or they're not, you know? And mm -hmm. honestly, it's kind of a blessing. We talk about this. So people that aren't really riding for you, they'll weed themselves out. Okay. Sure will. Mm -hmm. I remember when I first started, you know, being more present online and I mean, I got a potty mouth. I do curse. <laughs> Um, and my mom would be, you know, she followed me on social media. And she'd be like, you need to stop. You know, that's unprofessional. People are not going to want to work with you. And, you know, 500 some thousand followers later, like, <laughs> it has been shown that the people who want to work with you will work with you regardless. I mean, yeah. I'm not for everybody. I'm not trying to be for everybody. And that's just, that's just the nature of who it is. That's why it's very important for you to continue to get in front of new people. Like, like Jenny said, people are going to take their sides. They're going to be for you. They're going to be against you or whatnot. They're going to think you're right in this situation. They're going to think you're wrong in this situation. And that's why it's important for you to like be yourself, speak your mind, because I, we work from home. Okay. We're, we're doing all this stuff at our houses. Could you imagine showing up in your office space, in your house with that energy coming in and you don't even want to be there because you're you're putting on as somebody else every single time you get online or get in front of your audience. Like, no, that's that's hell to me. I would never want to do that. Hello. And now, like I said, I don't know why they're fighting or what they what the the friction is. Um, but um, yeah, I'm, so I'm only coming up because I don't know what they're. <laughs> I'm totally I, mean, I mean, it's honestly little petty beef. Uh, Glorilla, oh. she made a song saying that she slapped JT, and she didn't. It's a rumor. Oh. It's a rumor going around, but it's it's still kind of like once again, you're using someone else's name to build your platform, to build your community, um, to try to market and get your audience. So 
So Nikki says she slapped. No, no, no. Glorilla says she slapped JT. JT was just on tour with Nikki. Got she it. Popped out on tour with Nikki. Um, JT has been on tour lately, you know, and Glorilla, Glorilla called it a backyard barbecue because uh, JT is um, at, in the clubs marketing her music, basically. Got she's it. not on like a worldwide tour, but she's basically starting from the bottom like like yes. I have, like we talked about earlier, that that starting from the bottom type of stuff. Right. Um, and then, you know, well, so oh, yeah. That perspective, right? As artists, that's what you're supposed to do. Um, you have to get out there and and really touch the people first, so you can, like you said, just build that audience mm -hmm. connection. And it's really important because you have to understand what they want from you. You get a lot of insight and a lot of data when you're right there in the streets talking to them. Like, okay. You know, you're getting feedback. You can see how people react to your music, you know, all that good stuff. My brother is in music and I try to tell him, you don't listen. But <laughs> like there's certain things and insights you're going to get when you're there, right there with the audience that you wouldn't get if you weren't, you know, if you're trying yeah. to get too fast. Um, yeah. fact that you got to get your coins. And if that's who paying you. Yeah, we're true. not. And, you know, we're not in the era of just going viral anymore. Right. Like these companies are really seeing that people are making millions of dollars and they're making it harder for us as creators to go viral. So we as um, creators, we really have to touch base with our fan base and we really have to let our community know that we are real people. Right. Baby, I'm just like you. I grew up <laughs> I grew up in the hood. We had right. spaghetti for dinner too. You know what I mean? So it's like so it's you know that's just kind of how i compared her situation to mine's because i see where she's going and i see where she's going to end and i think she's going she's um at a really great start with this honestly yeah you know i i think i think that was jt with um one of the gals that we follow peach mcintyre i, I don't know Ooh. Uh, oh okay you got okay uh, <laughs> You, you got to tell us what the ooh is about now. <laughs> peach is a whole other topic, honey. That's a whole, I love I love me some peach, but peach is a whole other topic. But um, yeah, that's that's a whole other, <laughs> okay. a whole other right, topic. We'll, we'll leave it alone. Um, but I, that that is the same chick, right? That's the same. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. I, that was all I was asking for clarification. Like the, because the, she brought her on stage or something. Yeah, she did bring Peach on stage. Yeah, JT likes Peach a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that, that was cool. That was, that really, as a creator, yeah. that was nice. That was right. really nice. But once again, Peach started from the bottom. Right. I don't know, Peach. I don't. I don't know if you guys have been watching Peach for um mm -hmm. quite some time. Mm -hmm. She started out with the COVID food stamps video. I'll never forget that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She started yep. out with her COVID food stands video. <laughs> and I like Peach. The whole, you know, her husband situation, that's on her. You know, people, people, they want to see that. That's what they want to see. Her audience loves it. She has a um, she has a community that's gonna ride for her, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, exactly. but once again, that's that starting from the bottom that you on stage with somebody that you wouldn't even think that you would be able exactly. to get on stage with, you know what I mean? That so that was nice. I like that. Yeah, now that was the part. So that's why I was like, wait a minute. That's the same. I didn't want to say nothing at first. I was like, wait a minute. Is that the same? <laughs> um, as you can see how out of touch I am with hip hop music right now. Um, so yeah, she brought her up on stage and she was telling her you could do this too. And I was like, that's pretty dope that she's like telling her, you know, she could take her music and do it too. I think, I absolutely think Peach could rap too. Yeah, all these other folks out here can rap. Yeah, she can. She actually made a little bop. I think it. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. One of her songs that gets stuck in my head every time I'm cleaning my house. <laughs> <laughs> every time I'm cleaning my house up, I start hearing uh, her song in my head. So yes, she, what is that, she to definitely. Get the song or what? Get this money. Uh, <laughs> gotta get my house in order. She yup. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so she yeah yeah, and yes. I would love that happen because it would be pretty dope for because i root for her as just as a mom now she do have some content i'm like oh girl um but i root for her as a mom like doing it taking care of her family you know that perspective of, of things and, being and i mean coming from you know coming from where she came from like right. you gotta think about it as um and you know i don't know if anybody here else relates but you know i grew up i grew up in the hood so it, coming from living in the hood to uh from uh, low-income apartments 
and food stamps and Medicaid. You know, I don't know how many people have been there, but I have been there. Mm -hmm. um, and she was able to not have to even rely off of that. She sis don't even have a full time job. Right. This is her. This is her job. Yeah. She she's able to you know be at home with her kids, and I think as a mom, as a single mom, I think that's very important to me. So I love that that she was able to set that example. And I remember watching her and just kind of seeing um, her selling her. Uh, she also sold a I think a digital product at one point too. Mm -hmm. oh, she, and that made, before that, that made she was doing the waist trainers. I don't know she, if you remember that. Okay. Before everything, White before lady. everybody, she was selling um. Digital product when uh, Facebook first came out with their monetization program, mm -hmm. she was making 80k a month. I remember that, yeah. and she was selling a digital product, teaching people how to do that. So yeah. she was always very, uh, very much so a leader, very much so uh, worried about her community. She did not care about what people had to say, she was here to entertain her community and show her authentic, true self. So I love that. Yeah, and her her feud with her mom and all that good stuff. I'm just like, <laughs> woo, man. Um, and I'm a huge psycho psychology nut, so I'm just like breaking down all these like different. <laughs> I'm like, woo, this is happening. We can get this into this. And, um, but yeah, no, and you know, as moms ourselves, we that's why we created a whole journal, right? Our journal, um, wealthy moms. Um, we put together a whole journal for that reason, right? We are women who came from, you know corporate background, sales, you know, all these different industries. And now we primarily make money online. We don't have full-time jobs, none of that, right? All of our money comes from our content and things that we do online. Um, and we want to inspire and hopefully help and, and get other women to that place as well, because not only does it take the resources and all that, it also takes the mindset and mindset is where it first starts. Right. So she just kind of made a decision and she made that decision. and was like, I'm just going to do this. And who cares what everybody else thinks? Mm -hmm. And look at her. She's just flourishing. She's, she's doing amazing. Uh, amazing, amazing things in the space. Um, so I root for her. Like I said, I can't watch some of her stuff, but I do root for her <laughs> <laughs> as a creator. Um, so I would love to uh, pass the mic back to Jenny and so we can kind of get in a bit of your story and how you kind of built these groups up. Because you have what? How many? Five groups? Five Facebook groups? Four, four groups right now. Four, four groups. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Four Facebook groups. How did you get into all of this? How did you even get started? Um. So... Um, it all started from me doing affiliate marketing on TikTok. You know, I just wanted to make, I honestly just wanted to make some extra money. Um, I'm an affiliate for DHgate. I don't know who, you know, if anybody really knows what DHgate is, but it's just an app that they sell like sneakers and bags and stuff. So I started being an affiliate for that. And I started to post my reviews on TikTok um, and basically blew up off of doing affiliate marketing. So I decided to create a Facebook group based off of that because I wanted to bring my platform on over uh, my audience on over to another platform because, you know, TikTok can be weird sometimes. Um, so I went ahead and brought that platform on over to Facebook. But it wasn't something that I was even taking serious at the time because it just was a Facebook group. I wasn't taking it serious. So then I joined this uh, one Facebook group. It's called Black Girl Aesthetics. And I just kind of saw how, you know, a lot of the women in there were marketing and they were, you know, advertising their products and stuff. And I was like, I could, you know, I could do this. Um, so I went and I paid for the monthly promo. It was only $15. Um, and $15 literally changed my life. And, and I'm not saying that as just to just to say it, it literally changed my life. Um, my group literally went from a thousand members to 50,000 members. And I found myself making about $10,000 a month in commission off of me just posting in this Facebook group. So once I realized, okay, I know, you know, I got the, a hold of this Facebook thing a little bit. I got, you know, I know what I'm doing a, a little bit over here. Um, I wanted to essentially create a brand for myself that was going to stick because although affiliate marketing is nice, it's not something that sticks. It's not something that um, is going to have you stand out as a CEO or as an entrepreneur. It's not going to, it's not, you know, it's, it's just a, it's just a side hustle. Yeah. So I essentially wanted something that was going to stick, um, but I wanted to cater to content creators 
I wanted to teach, to teach creators how they could um, make money. You know, affiliate marketing was my only income at that point. So then once I got um, into affiliate marketing and I started to sell a digital product on affiliate marketing that I made from scratch because I didn't know anything about P, uh, PLRs at that time. <laughs> Um, so I created Rich Off of Content, wasn't even taking it serious, neglected the group, and I started to take it serious when one of my, uh, a girl that I followed on YouTube a while ago, she started to notice my success, my success and my growth, and she wanted to join my team. So we started to take it serious and started to see some growth, and I ended up, um, grossing so far this month i ended up grossing about thirteen thousand dollars uh solely off of selling digital products and group promo in this group so it really has been such a, a lucrative uh standpoint for me and i really tell everybody to create a facebook group because they stick around forever right, right. Mm -hmm. any questions from anyone here I got a lot of them, so I'll let you <laughs> I want to hear about these groups there. So you've got four groups total. Okay. Yeah, I have four yeah. groups. So I have um two, I have two shopping groups because like I said, affiliate marketing, you know, this is my little side hustle. Um, so so I was like, how can I get people to shop? Right. How can I get them to buy? Mm -hmm. Let me create a Facebook group for shopping. So I ended up creating uh, Finds from the Gate. That's the one Facebook group. That's my that's my first ever Facebook group that I created at 62,000 followers at the uh, members at the moment. Um, so I created that one. And then I created another group called Retail Therapy. Retail Therapy has 55,000 members in that group. Um, and I just kind of cross post in both of those groups when I receive products from ben vendors because vendors send me free stuff to review. When I receive the items, I go ahead and post, cross post them in both groups and um, tell them, hey, you know, 10 out of 10 quality is amazing. They're asking me, where can I where can I buy this at? Where can I buy? I need it. I need it. So essentially, that's kind of me making um, money from my commission from someone just purchasing a product. And then, of course, my third group is rich off of content. That's my that's my bread and my butter right there. <laughs> Rich Off of Content is basically my baby. That's my brand. Um, that is something that I feel like is going to make me a millionaire. And in six months, I was able to get to, we're, at, what, we're almost at 85,000, but I think I'm at 84,000 right now, members in that group. Um, and that group has just been such a great networking opportunity for me. Uh, that group, got me on his podcast. Um, so it really was such a opportunity for me that really helped me to um, grow and network as a creator that didn't know anything about anything besides making videos and posting and um, affiliate marketing. It really has opened my eyes to what's out there uh, that I can dive into as a creator. And then my fourth group um, so I got accepted into the Target affiliate program. My first, my fourth group is called Target Girl Aesthetics. Um, that group only has a thousand followers at the moment, but I'm still working on it. If I built these other three groups, I can definitely build this group. Yep. Um, this one was to dedicate towards my Target affiliate program. Nice. So you basically, well, let me not put words in your mouth. Tell me kind of strategy around that. Do you just okay. kind of pick something um, and really create a group for it? or? So my strategy around creating these groups was how can I make money off of this group? So if I'm going to create a group, it's not, I'm not creating, I'm not going to create a pink group if it's not going to make me money. Got it. And how, how gonna, closely do they align to your lifestyle, Dara? Because it seems like, you know, you love retail and shopping. Uh -huh. I mean... Hopefully, you <laughs> <laughs> um, it really is. Um, I'm, I've always been a fashion girl. I've always been into fashion. I've always been like you know a girly girl. Um, one, and then also it's like I didn't grow up with much either. So you know you have you get to a point where you want to shop. When you get to a point where you get older, you 
you're getting that corporate money, you know, because I, I work for a corporate company at, at the moment. So you're getting your corporate money. You start to shop. You start to buy little things here and there. And you want to show that to the world because it's something that you love. If it, it aligns with my personality, I'm a fashion girl. You know, I'm always, I like to consider myself best dressed, you know, when we go to, when we go to brunch or something. So, <laughs> so it really aligns really well. And then, you know, also I love teaching people about content and just creating, because like I said, like when I, when I uh, received my first $10,000 from affiliate marketing it really took such a turn for me as, um, like I said, someone that came from low income and food stamps. It took such a turn for me that I was like, hold up, $10,000. Like, <laughs> you know, like I made this money off of posting on the Internet. Um, so, it, it, you know, it aligned really well with what I wanted to do. And then it, it just was tunnel vision uh, for me from there. And so tell us a little bit about how you got your start. I know you said that, um, you know, um, where you, where, where, tell us a little bit about the origin story. Where are you from? I'm from New Jersey. Okay. Okay. So you grew up in New Jersey. I grew up in New Jersey. Um, well, uh, well, okay. Well, let me say it. I grew up in Camden, New Jersey. I don't know if you uh, guys know much about Camden, but it's, it's the hood. Um, so I, <laughs> You know, I grew up in Camden, New Jersey. And like I said, I did not grow up with much. Um, I grew up um, very much so with the lights off and pretty much having my mom was a CNA. So pretty much depending on one income in the household and having to really help out with my other siblings. Um, so I grew up in Camden. And then once I started to get older, you know, I was really trying to find my way in this world as just a young black woman. <laughs> I was really trying to find myself because um, I had enrolled in community college and, you know, I was, I had, I wanted to be a teacher, which is ironic. I wanted to be a teacher. Um, so, you know, I went into community college and then I ended up dropping out and I had a full-time job at Wendy's. I was a manager and I hated that job. Um, it wasn't me. I couldn't, my hair was not red. I couldn't even dye my hair. I couldn't even wear my nails. Like this is a part of me, you know, and I yes. couldn't do any of that. And it was, it was, it was suppressing what I felt like my life should have been. So once I started to really, um, you know, once I really started to lock in with myself and figure out what I wanted to do as someone that was confused, you know, you when you drop out of college, you're kind of like, where do I go from here? You know, where do I, you know, I don't have a degree. All of my friends are um, graduating college and I'm I'm a manager at Wendy's. Where, where do I go from here? So I came to a point in my life where I finally got a job at Comcast got the job at Comcast and I'm like, listen, I'm about to change my life from here. <laughs> um, I said, so, so, you know, I ended up getting that job at Comcast and making $15 an hour. And I was able to move me and my son out of Camden and I moved 45 minutes away from there. And I said, when I move into this house, this is, I, I promised myself that this was going to be the, uh, the start of my new life. I called it my new life. You know, I was really heavy into manifesting. I was really heavy into um, believing that I could get whatever I wanted out of this world because um, there wasn't the living in, in a one bedroom apartment just wasn't like it just it just didn't resonate with me. It wasn't something that I felt like was me. It just wasn't like my my end end all be all. I guess you could say. So once I moved into my house here I started creating content I started getting in front of the camera more but I was more so just getting on camera and being pretty I was in front of the camera just posing and modeling I really didn't have any direction of what I wanted to do at that point this was in the era where TikTok was all about um viral sounds and uh the girls getting on camera and just being cute. That's, that was around that era. So I had managed to build up my following to 8,000 followers, but I, I wasn't making any money. I was, I was still working my full-time job, uh, living paycheck to paycheck. So what moved you to, to TikTok though? Like what was the, 
What do you feel me to? Yeah. Um, I just kind of saw the success. Well, when I was 10, I had already um, been watching, you know, uh, YouTubers. When I was like 10 years old, I was always, I was Jackie Ina, Aaliyah J. Um, there's another uh, Veronica. Her name is Viva, Viva La Posh. Uh, she's the pink Jeep girl. A lot of people know her by like the pink Jeep girl. Um, I was always watching them when I was like 10. So I was, I always wanted to be a YouTuber. Uh -huh. And what really made me get on TikTok was like, oh, <laughs> if y'all are going viral, I know I can go viral. Right? <laughs> if you're going viral, oh, I can go viral if I stay. So I just got on there and I just started posting five times a day. Hello. What was your first viral video? What was your first one? So my first viral video was me in front of the camera, you know, my red hair, looking all <laughs> cute. Um, and I just was at the moment just kind of posing to like a song in the background. And that was like my first viral video. I think I got like 50,000 views on there. I ain't made no money from that video. <laughs> this, I just, it was, I said, my friend, she, um, my one of my friends, she said, girl, you just on here looking pretty. Is <laughs> You are not making no money. She said, listen, I'm going to tell you how you can make some money. Ran down affiliate marketing to me. And I'm like, okay, cool. Let me let me get started. So once I got started, I remember my first, uh, not my first video, but my third video hit a million views on TikTok. Wow. And that was just me showing a pair of sneakers. Wow. That was just me showing a pair of sneakers and after that i decided to really take it serious and i was like this is my lifestyle from now right. on i'm po as when i get up in the morning i roll over right <laughs> wait on it you know what i mean because it's something that i decided to take serious but i really didn't start the rich off of content brand until um i started the rich off of content facebook group honestly so where did the rich off of content name come from? Like, how did you even come up with this name for the group? So once I realized my success uh, with my other Facebook groups, I went on TikTok, of course. You know, TikTok is a new Google. I went on TikTok right, right. and I had searched up Facebook groups. And some some girl, and reminder, this girl, she didn't even have that many likes or views on her video. And she said a lot of people sleep on Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. She said, create a Facebook group around your niche and promote it in other groups. So I started to, okay, let me create a Facebook group around my niche. What's what's my niche at this point? What's my niche? What's my niche? And I had said to my friend, what can I sell? What what can I what can the name of my group be? Uh where that where to where I can actually uh sell my digital products in? What what can I what can I name this group? And in my mind I'm like, oh rich off of content it was that easy it was something that was aesthetically pleasing it was something that would draw in um people from all walks of life you know you're a chef you want to be rich off of your content you're a nurse you want to get into the nurse aesthetic um you're a a girl that goes to the gym you want to be rich off of your content right. so i really kind of based it around honestly what could make me money because i was really um and i still am i was really into my making money era i right. was really into um i'm really into my um if it don't make me money i'm not paying attention to it that's, right that's mm -hmm. that's, that's yeah so that's where that came from you talked about a lot of good things there so authenticity right red hair aesthetics like you know making it fit with who you are and it resonates i think it resonates with each of us especially as black women um especially working in you know other environments i have a friend especially that, rolling over and going right to your phone that, oh. that's <laughs> like okay but i mean so it, like <laughs> it helps feed into your whole self you talked about manifestation manifestation mm -hmm. um you know kind of having that renewed mindset and i think it's something that all of us can relate to yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from anybody? I, I know I've, I'm, I've been asking a lot. So. <laughs> <laughs> so where can people find you? Like, are you teaching a course too? I know you say you don't do the, you know, the no. master's so rights, but are you gonna? Is that coming in the future? 
So actually this Friday, I am offering a free class, just kind of giving people the rundown on how they can create uh, lucrative communities um, within their Facebook group. So I am having a free class. It's going to be today at 8 p.m. Um, and of course, you can find me on Facebook at Dara B with two E's at the end. Um, and of course, you can find me in the Rich Hustle Content Group. I'm always in there. Um, and then I also did last week drop a Facebook to profit uh, playbook that does come with a lot of uh, inf informational information uh, for people that are really just looking to create lucrative communities um, off of their Facebook groups, creating passive income, uh, getting organized and really taking um, your brand to another level with a Facebook community. Um, so I did end up dropping that uh, playbook last week. So that is also available for anybody that does want to get into it. But I would love for everybody to join me Friday at um, 8 p.m um in the facebook group we're going to be live we're going to be doing a master class we're going to be talking about a lot of helpful things uh when it comes to facebook and really just uh get into your bag oh, i love it um we did get one question do we ladies do we want to answer this or sure okay let's go ahead and get into it and as we kind of bring it to a close uh question Besides TikTok, what are relevant platforms to be active on to grow your audience, to grow an audience, excuse me? What do y'all think of threads and lemonade? I got my thoughts on threads. So I'll let y'all go ahead and dive into that question. What do you think? And anyone can go. Um, for me, threads is a no brainer because as as a writer, it's um the first platform that I went viral on was actually Facebook, and that's just you know, through writing, just knowing how to convey what a lot of people are thinking in words that people want to like and share and comment and discuss on. So I really am focused on, okay, going back. And even if I have to repost some of the content that I've already went viral with on Facebook, like that's what I'm going to do. Because I realize that a lot of people on Facebook and, and, and Twitter and threads, like some people just want to read. <laughs> like video content is out there we're not gonna we definitely not gonna step away from that but some people just want to read <laughs> jenny just, i love facebook i'm not even gonna lie i just cannot <laughs> break from the chains but i do like to read because if i have to watch a video and it's two or three in the morning i don't even want to hear it so i'll just wait especially if it doesn't have subtitles you know mm -hmm. may or may not get watched um but the reality is that we are in a environment that you know we've got to adapt to what's coming to us um, so there's going to be new apps. There's going to be, you know, new technology that we have to embrace. I've seen Lemon 8 pop up uh, several times and it looks like it's a good place for affiliate marketers. Um, so that may be the next, you know, kind of big app. Yeah. So I definitely feel like Lemon 8 is a really good one. I feel like a lot of people are sleeping on Lemon 8. Also, I don't know if people know uh, Lemon 8 is TikTok's baby, basically. They created Lemon 8. Um, it seems like they're really pushing their creator on Lem creator program on Lemonade as well, too. Mm -hmm. um, I have seen good success on Lemonade as well, too, you know, with just posting consistently um, and giving that good hook to real people in. So I think that's a really good platform as well, too. I haven't really gotten into threads all like that as well either, but I have seen other creators have really good success on threads as well. Um, what I love about threads is the fact that when you post a thread, it'll show up on Instagram as well. So it yeah. notifies your Instagram followers that you have a thread going on um, and it directs them there. Um, I love the fact that you can go on there and literally say at algorithm and tell them who you want to talk to and it'll actually send you the people you want to talk to. Um, you can't do that a lot, but you can have it as that kind of your entry post or your introduction post. And it will literally pull the exact audience and exact people that you want to come to that post. Um, so I love that that feature is there. And the voice, the voice notes are amazing. I don't know who's listening to voice notes, but they are there. <laughs> um, so it's a good way to have, you know, um, and right now what I've been doing or what I've done in the past, because I ain't posted on Facebook in a minute. Anyway, that's another conversation for another time. Um, but when I do post, I try to use voice notes. I try to just voice it out and have it type it for me. And that's the post because your girl ain't got no time. I, I cannot give all of my attentions to all of these different platforms. It ain't happening. 
Um, so I try to make sure that I, wherever I go, I'm being very uh, strategic about it and, and doing it the you know, fastest way possible. Um, but I do love threads. Threads seems to be really, really promising. Um, X is kind of out of here. With yeah. everything the homeboy doing over there, I'm like, yeah, you know what? Ooh, I'm going to mess with you. Um, so threads will probably replace um, X, better known as Twitter. Um, I think it will replace it in, in the future. Um, but I, I love Lemonade as well. Lemonade does a really great job at notifications whenever there is a great topic. I have not seen personal success there. Like I said, uh, trying to put your content everywhere is a whole entire doozy. So really, I'm hammering in and focusing on YouTube to be my main place, YouTube and TikTok to be my main two places where I'm showing up. And I'll let the others get what they get, right? They get the leftovers of whatever I can give. Um, but I love Facebook groups. I love that you talked about Facebook groups, Daria. Um, I just want to end it on the fact that I have had Facebook groups for years now. I am one of the first adapters between me, Lorraine, and Jenny. We've been on Facebook for a long time when they first came out with live streaming. Um, so I've had Facebook groups for a long time. It is a, ooh, if you could give some tips on how to post there, because I cannot <laughs> keep my post up on a Facebook. Right, group. right. You, you can yes. really so, <laughs> um, I mean, so one thing I would say is definitely interact in other groups related to your niche. So if you're if you have a group about cooking, make sure you're joining other groups about cooking that have uh, really good engagement and a big audience as well. Girl, pay for the promo, please. A lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people are so skeptical about just paying for that yearly promo, you know, because we have people that pay for promo as well in my group, but pay for your promo. It'll pay off in the long run. You'll end up literally creating a whole new community off of paying for that promo. So that's really one big tip that I can give to anybody looking to expand or grow their Facebook group. Um, and then also, I think we see a lot of those viral posts. They have those aesthetic pictures coming from uh, Pinterest. Use Pinterest to your advantage. Take the aesthetically pleasing pictures off of there that are related to your niche. Share them in your group. Share your opinion. Um, and then share them in other groups. Tag your group. Make sure you're loud about your community and your space. Thank you. That's that's awesome. Because I, I got so many groups and they all are not getting no love. None. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's really helpful. All right, Jenny, I'll let you take us out. Meanwhile, I've just went and <laughs> looked at the action items for all my groups. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Dara, for the inspiration. I'll be working on that today. Of course, of course. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if you ever open up a Facebook group anonymous, you let us know because that's a <laughs> <laughs> That is so funny. Yes. So thank you. Uh, thank you again for Dara B. She's our Facebook group specialist, affiliate marketer. Um, and thank you to our audience for tuning in to the Viral Cash Flow podcast. Remember to subscribe. Lorraine, you've dropped the membership link in the comments. Yes. Make sure you subscribe, rate, and review um, our podcast on your favorite platform wherever you're watching. And join us next time as we continue the journey on decoding viral success. Keep riding the wave and tuning or turning clicks into cash. Thank you.